Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India In this lecture, I'm going to tell you about similarity of matrices. So to understand this, let's uh, start with a vector space V and a T a linear map from V to V. So we'll assume that V is a vector space over the field K. That's the underlying field. And let's also have a basis U1, U2, Un a basis of V. So this V is an n-dimensional vector space over K. Then uh, we can write down the matrix of T with respect to the spaces U1, U2, Un. So if A is the matrix of T, with respect to U1, U2, Un, this means that uh, Tvj is given by the expansion of Tuj is given by summation Aij Ui. I goes from 1 to n. So this identity we can also write in a slightly more slick form. Let's form a vector whose coordinates are themselves vectors. So a vector, a row vector whose coordinates are the basis vectors u1, u2, un. And then what we are saying is that, uh, let me just move this to the side, we can form the other row vector, it's image under T. So TU1, TU2, TUN. This vector is equal to this vector times the matrix A. So this uh, identity here which I have written in vector form is equivalent to the identity above which can be taken as the definition of saying that the matrix of T with respect to the basis U1, U2, Un is A. Okay, now let's see what happens to A under a change of basis. So suppose we have another basis then we can try to expand these new basis elements in terms of the old basis. So let's say Vj is equal to some i goes from 1 to n, x i j u i. So this equation we can write in terms of uh, this vector notation as V1, V2, Vn is equal to u1, u2, un times x. So this is the same as saying that vj is summation xij ui. Okay and now I want to understand the basis of uh, the matrix of t with respect to this new basis v1, v2, vn. So now if you look at t vj well this is us by linearity this is summation i goes from 1 to n uh, x i j t u i so we can write this identity as uh, in vector notation as t v 1 t v n is equal to t u 1 T u n times x. Okay, so now we are ready to write down the basis of A with respect to the new basis. So what we need to figure out is how to write T v 1 T v n in terms of v 1 v 2 v n. Okay, so T v 1 T v 2 T v n is we call it's this T u 1 T u 2 T u n times x. So this is equal to T u1, T 
du2 tun times x but now we know what tu1 tu2 tun is over here we've written it down this u1 u2 un times a so we have times a times x and now let's try to express this u1 u2 un in terms of v1 v2 vn we've seen that v1 v2 vn this row vector of vectors is this row vector u1 u2 un times x so we can invert this and write that u1 u2 un is v1 v2 vn times x inverse so we have v1 v2 vn times x inverse ax so here if we call this matrix b then what we get is that the matrix of t with respect to the basis v1 v2 vn is b and this motivates the definition of similarity So suppose we have two matrices A, B in M and K and by N matrices over any field K, we say that A is similar to B so um, we will use the notation for this A and we'll just draw a squiggle here if there exists a matrix X in GL and K. So <clears throat> this matrix X that we had going from the basis U to the basis V has to be invertible because uh, we can go back from the basis V to the basis X, U by its inverse. So this matrix X is in GL K such that B is equal to X inverse ax and the point is that two matrices are similar if and only if they represent the same linear transformation with respect to different bases with respect to possibly different bases and this uh, you can easily see that the similarity is an equivalence relation now because two matrices are similar if and only if they re represent the same linear transformation any property of a matrix that you define with respect which in terms of the linear transformation corresponding to a matrix will not change if you replace a matrix by a similar matrix so for example um, so so here's the sort of meta theorem any property of a matrix a that is defined in terms of its linear transformation so if you have a matrix a you can define ta from uh, kn to kn given by ta of v is equal to av so here we think of v as a column vector and so you just write multiply a uh, multiply a on the right by v to get a linear transformation so this is the linear transformation corresponding to the uh, matrix a is invariant under similarity that means if you replace a by a similar matrix then this 
property will not change so that's uh, so for example so if you take the rank of a matrix a well you can define it purely in terms of the linear transformation ta this is the dimension of the image of ta so if a is similar to b then the rank of a is equal to rank of b okay we can define a matrix to be idempotent a is idempotent if ta is equal to ta squared so this is the definition of idempotence. It's defined purely in terms of the linear transformation corresponding to A. So if A is idempotent and A is similar to B, then B is also idempotent. Okay. So similarly, you can talk about nil potence, that is some power of A is uh, zero or something like that. Uh, here's a somewhat more interesting one. So uh, let I be the ideal uh, of all polynomials Pt such that P of Ta. So given a linear transformation and a polynomial, uh, uh, so this is a polynomial in Kt. Maybe let's specify that P in KT such that P of TA. So this is again a linear transformation. So if, if P is A0 plus A1 T plus so on, then P of TA is A0 plus A1 TA plus A2 TA squared and so on. So to look at all the polynomials is that PTAV uh, no, PTA is the zero linear transformation. It's a zero linear transformation from B to B. Then this I is an ideal. In KT. And so since KT is a principal ideal domain, this ideal I is generated by a single polynomial. And uh, if we want to make that polynomial unique, we can take it to be monic. So there exists a unique monic polynomial QAD such that I is the ideal generated by QAD. This polynomial QA is called the minimal polynomial of A. So this is called the minimal polynomial of A. Now this polynomial is defined entirely in terms of the linear transformation TA. So what we have is that if A is similar to B then the minimal polynomial of A is equal to the minimal polynomial of B. Similar matrices have the same minimal polynomial. Okay, And uh, there are some more properties that are invariant under similarity. So for example, trace. So we know that uh, trace of AB is trace of BA for any two square matrices A and B. Um, so we can uh, show that trace of X inverse AX. So if B is similar to A, then B is X inverse AX. We can uh, use this trace of AB is trace of BA by taking this to be the first matrix A and this to be the matrix B. And now we reverse the order. So what we get is this is trace of x times x inversely 
So this is the second matrix here and this is the first matrix here. But that's just the same as x times x inverse cancels so trace of a. So what we get is if a is similar to b then trace of a is equal to trace of b. Uh, we have a similar thing with determinant. Determinant of a b well it's determinant of a times determinant of b which is the same as determinant of b times determinant of a because the field k is multiply uh, is commutative and so this is determinant of b a and by the same kind of argument you get that if a is similar to b then determinant of a is equal to determinant of b and let's look at uh, the last most important invariant of similarity class is the characteristic polynomial. Recall that the characteristic polynomial of A is defined to be the determinant of Ti minus A. So this is a matrix whose entries are themselves polynomials in T. But uh, if A is uh, similar to B, then the matrix Ti minus A is similar to the matrix Ti minus B. And so you can show that if A is similar to B, then chi A is equal to chi B. So we see that a lot of uh, important features of matrices do not change under similarity. And this is because similar matrices uh, rep represent the same linear transformations. So we can ask now, uh, is there a way to decide whether two matrices are similar or not? And we can also ask, how do I classify all matrices up to similarity? Okay, we will see the answer to both these questions in the next lecture.